How's it going? Good. <laughs> Welcome to the Behind the Art Inspiration Podcast. And here we are in Hanalei. This is the first time I've done this. Well, actually the second time because I was in DC with Teresa Elliott. But this is the first time I've like met an artist and then decided, hey, let's do a podcast. And this is Max, you're gonna say your last name? Lemaire. Lemaire, Max, Max Lemaire. Lemaire. And he does these amazing paintings that we're gonna talk about. But the way that I found Max was, I had come to Hanalei Bay to eat at the beach, no, to swim at the beach. And then we went to eat next door and I was just walking around and I actually saw your walkway that laid, led down to your paintings. Mm -hmm. So it's very good advertising. and. Um, struck up a conversation and his I'm in his his actual gallery which is it's actually quite amazing that he that you lived this life right and so let's start all the way back to where how did you end up in this space like how did you end up here uh, in Kauai in general or in this yeah. specific space both Kauai in general I was living after I finished I went to art school in Boston traveled the country being the States for a while ended up in Montana for a while and within this one week period three people told me about Kauai. This wow. was 2003 before social media. I didn't know anybody here and I bought a one-way ticket, came out here with a backpack and wow. fell in love. Mm -hmm. And so have you been here ever since or did you did you just stay here? I was here for about a year then went to accidentally moved to New Zealand. Okay. Yeah, as you do. I was over there for almost six years and I uh, got into furniture making and custom woodwork. And so I want to talk about that because um, a lot of Max's work has his woodwork around them as the frames. And uh, Yeah, you can see the one behind me. This yeah. is a... Uh, we can actually whoop. turn this thing. Bumped it. Um, yeah, so this is a Milo frame, which is a Hawaiian hardwood, and then it's got a redwood accent that's been stained black. Um, on the other side of the camera you here. Can just turn it right around. Um, just pivot. Yep. yep. We'll do. There we go. There we go. And then I'll lean that back a little bit. This is one of my other custom frames made from local koa wood. Koa wood. Mm -hmm. I have a little boy in my class named Koa. Can't yeah. Wait. I'll have to tell him. There we go. <laughs> show. Can you show them this one over here? Because I love this one. Yeah, I know there's it. a lot of glare on it, but um, this one, when you come to Kauai, this is what you see. Like yeah, Nepali Coast. The Nepali Coast, and oh my gosh, the one down below. That's the hike. There's a 11 mile hike that takes you out to Nepali Coast, and that's the hallelujah moment when you finally made it there after hiking all these sketchy cliffs all day. Yeah, yeah. I did a sketchy hike. You probably wouldn't think it was sketchy. It was. Um, <laughs> oh, any hike on Kauai can be sketchy. It was a little sketchy, enough. especially when it started raining and then the uh, the red the red clay turned into kind of like a water slide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was shaped just like a water slide. <laughs> was that a uh, sleeping giant? It was sleeping giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know that spot. Sleeping yeah. giant. That's great. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. I was a little afraid. When it's dry, you can kind of do a little Sonic the Hedgehog and ride yeah. run down it on the sides of the walls uh, there. Maybe, maybe my third time down, but yeah, yeah. not the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure my son wanted to do that, yeah. Nikolai. So, um, so then you, you decided you wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. And then now to bring us to this space. So I moved back to Kauai in 2010. My soul had been screaming at me to paint again mm. because I'd been like, I put that on the back burner for a while. Um, started painting again, but was dipping into the surreal and abstract, which is more where I started as an artist and you know, There's where my roots were. There's a surreal piece right there. There is, yeah. yeah. And then uh, also kind of was getting into visionary art, which is tying in the more spiritual side. Mm. Um, and then when I, oh, well, I started to dip my toes into realism with doing some figurative stuff, doing like playing with landscapes, but really when that shift happened was when I opened this space. Okay. Um, a dear friend of mine, Aaron Feinberg, who's a photographer, he has a, this used to be his gallery. Okay. At the time, he had three spots on the island. He opened up this little gallery, then a larger one in Poipu, and then the St. Regis, or what was the St. Regis, offered him a spot and he, had, he felt like he had to take it. So okay. this spot he didn't have m open much because most of his staffing was going to these other places. So I kept asking him, what are you doing with that space? Mm -hmm. What are you doing with that space? <laughs> and one day he said, you know, if you want to take it. So then it was time to, you know, uh, do it for real. It's like, okay, yeah. I guess I'm a pr professional artist now. And we were talking a little bit beforehand and, and, and how you kind of do every aspect of 
the business. I do. So many people don't know that there are other aspects other than just painting. Just the fun the part of making art, yeah. The marketing, <laughs> but there's yeah. also making prints. I think sure. we're looking at a print there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. and these two behind us. So I, uh, before I opened this gallery, I opened a print shop for a fine artist with my buddy and we were doing all the G Clay stuff. So in that process, I got really familiar with how... <laughs> Well, welcome back, everybody, to the Behind the Art Inspiration podcast. And this time, Max and I are in different studios, but we're still both on the island of Kauai. I'm back at my Kauai studio, which is actually in Lawai, and Max is in Hanalei. Mm -hmm. And we're inside of his studio. And this is actually, I can show you now one of my paintings that I just did. Right? Oh, amazing. Yeah, this is Hanalei Bay. What's the, that's from Hanalei. That's Hanalei nice. Bay. Yep. Beautiful. And um, yeah. That's acrylic? That's acrylic. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. So when we left off before, I was in your studio and mm -hmm. we were talking about, you know, we, we did it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm pretty sure that I can link these two videos together. So it's one video. Hopefully that works. Sure. And what we were talking about when we got cut off due to technology, it's all technology's fault was um, prints, printmaking. Like we were talking about you making prints of your work. Yeah. So. Yeah, so when I was uh, in 2013, I opened up a print shop to make uh, G Clays. So canvas and paper prints uh, with a buddy of mine who's a photographer. And uh, we both were wanting, needing and wanting a local printer that could print high quality with consistency and there wasn't what we needed so we made it happen um so over the next the course of the next several years i got really good at figuring out how to a capture uh paintings you know take photographs and master those photos and also to get all the print settings right to stretch canvases and build stretchers and i i've honestly built hundreds and hundreds of canvas stretchers and stretched them so by the time I actually opened up this gallery, I had that side of it really well figured out. And I was able to do all my own prints in house, which uh, made starting my own business uh, a little bit more doable. Starting a gallery. Yeah. That's amazing. And uh, just a memory of being in your studio, maybe a little over an hour ago or under an hour ago i don't can't remember it was so hot in there but let me tell you it is so cool up here on the mountain and the wind is really blowing so you might be hearing that wind blowing right now but i'm assure you i'm much cooler than you are right now <laughs> <laughs> i i infinitely cooler for sure um yeah well i had to turn off the ac this so we didn't hear it too loud anyway um so yeah, so I opened this gallery in uh, 2015, had the opportunity when a buddy of mine was letting go of the space. And then, uh, you know, it was time to be a professional artist and do it for real. At that point, I had shown art in other places. I had done shows. I had done quite a few of the art fairs that we have here on the island, but um, the, you know, it was time to take it to the next level. And it was very much a, an, an exercise of trust and of, you know, following your own instincts and, and, and intuition and, and putting yourself out there. And it was a little scary at first, for sure. Um, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, for a while, not, I didn't have any sales experience. Uh, unless you count when I, I had a job at uh, Toys R Us when I was 17. Other than that, I've been a builder and a maker of things, a fixer of things. So um, I got to learn that whole side of it, of talking to people and having all those conversations and uh, finding how to be relaxed in that setting while, while also being authentic. Um, so that's been a really good journey. Yeah, I can imagine. I've been on that same journey. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, yeah. I yeah. Know, but what I find fascinating right now is just traveling around and painting like just painting where I go and then meeting people and meeting artists and uh, interviewing and I'm kind of really digging that right now 
Um, yeah. So you said that you live in Kapa'a, right? Mm -hmm. Tell us yeah. about, a little bit about where you live and um, what inspires you there. Kapa'a is a wonderful central location on, on Kauai. You know, you actually have access to uh, food and grocery stores and restaurants and things you need. My favorite parts of Kapa'a are uh, Kealia Beach, which is just down the street from my house. Um, so to be able to walk down the hill in five or 10 minutes or drive there in three minutes is, you know, and be able to swim all year round is magical. Uh, there's a great bike path there too. And then uh, a place called Makaleha, which is, um, I haven't really painted up there, but it gives me endless inspiration as far as really um, dropping into nature and connecting back to source. Because that's, for, for me, the essence of all creativity is finding that clear channel that you can, uh, you know, be a conduit for, uh, you know, life force energy and be directing it with your own, uh, you know, creative swerve as it were um so yeah that's one of my favorite spots right there there are a few little waterfalls tucked away in the in the you know the back uh in behind the neighborhoods of kapahi there um so i love it there and then my favorite spots on the island to paint or subject matter are right here in Hanalei where i work and uh on nepali coast um, we nepali coast is a little bit more of an adventure to get to but I think that's a good thing. You know, it's one of those places that it, it's a pilgrimage where you, you earn it by, you know, getting yourself there essentially. Right. And so there's two ways to get there, maybe three, but one way is yeah. hiking, right? hiking in there. Yep. So yep. You said it was like a, an 11 mile hike. 11 mile hike. And it's not flat at all. It's up your, your chain. You start at sea level, you go up you know, 700 feet back down to sea level, back up a thousand feet, back down a bit. And then, and then you get to the parts where the rocks are crumbling away and the trail is, you know, 18 inches wide. And there's a, you know, 700 foot drop. If you mess up, um, there are a few sketchy places on the trails where you're taking little baby steps and taking your time. But once you get to Kalalau, it's phenomenal you know, uh, quite a few of these paintings are behind there. So it's worth the payoff for sure. You can also boat there yeah. or kayak. Um, you're, yeah, there's rules about being able to just uh, get off a boat and drop in uh, around that. The other way to see it is to hike up top. So there's a few trails that actually take you uh, above it. Yeah. So I actually went there the other day. I went by boat, mm. <laughs> but yeah, we talked about this before but it didn't get captured on video. We were talking about the color of the water, like mm. the color of, it's it's an amazing phthalo blue and you you, you drop a bit of Viridian blue and uh, Viridian green into that. Yeah. You were saying, but it's just fascinating how that color comes about. Right. right. And it's, right. I mean, it's sort of, it's sort of this color here, this really deep mm -hmm. blue color. Yeah, and I think to get it in paint, it has to be done with transparent layers. Mm. Um, I found like no amount of opaque paint will do it because you need you you need a base layer like to recreate the behavior of the light. You need a base layer of like that that sandy that coral sand, and then multiple layers of transparent blue green on top of it so you'd be seeing the light bounce through the paint hit the 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 tan of the canvas back through the paint the transparent paint to your eye and that's how i think about painting is uh recreating those uh what the light the behavior of the light's doing so when i paint say clouds and mist i'll paint the mountains in almost full color saturation. And then I'll knock it back with glazes of, uh, you know, mostly medium with a little dash of white, little dash of like Payne's gray or purple or something, or even blue to just give it that 
that atmospheric push back into space. Wow, that's yeah. incredible. This will be so nice to listen to on Spotify just as an audio podcast because you're being so descriptive with, you know, the, the names of the colors and I'm sure that people will find it fascinating. Yeah. And yeah, and that's that's something, you know, when people uh ask how you paint like how do you do this the first the answer that's most important is uh, shifting how you see you know because most people are looking around and they're looking at the storyline and the content of uh, the meaning that they're ascribing to what they're seeing right uh, but as an artist you actually shift your whole brain into seeing it in layers of color and shape and like a, a puzzle, you know, when I'm, when I'm watching a sunset, I'm there like with my palette, like, okay, so we've got, you know, a cerulean blue, the, that other blue, we got some of this, that goes first. And then we need a little dioxazine purple, a little Payne's gray. And, you know, and I'm, and I'm building all those layers in my head and thinking about the transparency of them and the, the, the layer order and all of that sort of thing. So there's a shift that that happens when you really get serious about your art, where you actually start seeing the world around you differently. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you have on uh, you have extra vision because you can look out into out into you know just out and you can just see the colors and other people might not see those colors at first, right? Right, right. Yeah, especially like yeah in the shadows, you know, like I. When, uh, when I'm talking to people, uh, you know, say, look at the purples there. And they say, I don't see the purples. I'm like, I know it looks gray, but if you're going to, if you're going to say, what color is it? What color is it? And they say, oh yeah, it is purple, but you have to, you know, people aren't looking for that yet. And that's the big shift. And so that's what yeah. makes, can make artwork so incredible is the juxtaposition of those colors that, uh, people may not see, but that we see. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then, yeah. And then bringing that out as a painter, you get to uh, play with saturation and color relationships. So you can take a color uh, relationship that you see happening and really bring that out for other people to see. And, it, you know, that's where the emotional quality of painting happens. You know, colors, whether we think about it or not, uh, we have a, an emotional relationship to so as you're, you're painting, you're also uh, creating uh, a setup for an emotional experience. Right, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So do you do uh, any plein air painting? Rarely. Um, I used to do a bunch of watercolor sketches, um, mostly for getting, figuring out compositions for paintings. Mm -hmm. um, lately, I've, I've been doing these sort of uh, epic pieces where, you know, it's something I want to leave to the world. I'm like, all right, I'm only alive for, for so many years. I want to leave a couple paintings that I went, fully went there, you know, full send. Um, so those are more studio pieces that take hundreds of hours over the courses of uh, the course of many months. So uh, I think I'll come back around to that. I started painting a lot looser than I'm doing now. I've gotten to that meticulous, super, uh, yeah, high detail level. And it's nice. I think I'll let the, the pendulum swing in the other direction at some point. But, you know, it's nice to challenge yourself and uh, feel like you're, you're getting better at it. Right. So next time I come, because I'll be coming back to the island quite frequently, I'm going to bring my right. travel easel. So I'll be... Oh, great and my backpack and um, I'll actually be going on location to place like this was my visit where I kind of saw where everything was and got to know the island mm -hmm. so then when I come yeah. back, I'll be painting out in plein air I can give you a few spots too that uh were you know the perspective and the uh, composition is really good yeah and I really I didn't see as many like I wanted to be in a waterfall like actually in a waterfall but I never hmm. got there. I can think of a few. Yeah, make that happen. They, uh, waterfalls can be hard to paint just as far as a uh, composition goes. Cause you know, if you're staring up at it, then what's the view, you know? You gotta get, you gotta get enough distance from it to be able to um, 
have it in perspective. I've tried it a couple of times. I haven't really, I have, I haven't been successful with, with it yet to where I'm happy with it, but it's a good, uh, it's a good adventure. Okay. Well, thank you once yeah. again for uh, joining me on, this is our second, actually it's our third video, but I think video number two disappeared. So, um, Thanks for joining me. Yeah. Did we uh, did we lose the NFT piece? That's the piece I think we lost. Do you want to do you want to show us that again? Because that's the piece that's missing. It could show up again, but right now it's yeah yeah lost. Um. So on uh, Thursday, August twelfth, twenty twenty one, um, I'm launching my first NFT edition, which is kind of the intersection of the digital side with the fine art side. And what I love about it is it provides an opportunity for storytelling. Um, so I'm doing an edition that comes with a physical print, but also comes with an augmented reality package. So through your phone, you can scan a QR code, look at the, the print and have it come alive. And also have it um, kind of scroll through layers that show you uh, 360 video and stills of Nepali from the water, Nepali from up on top in the trails inside my studio while I'm painting it and some other great content. Um, I can show you the piece that it's all linking to. And also the flip the camera around here. The card that you were talking about before. There it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's the yeah. piece. Um, so this is the original here. This is an oil on panel with the Koa frame that I made. Um, and then that's going to link. So I've got the edition comes with a mounted print that's basically a high resolution fine art paper mounted to aluminum. Uh oh, your phone just, your phone. There I we know. Go. There we go. So here's the, here's a tester card. So it comes with a QR code on the back in the image, and it'll actually uh, link to that and show you. Uh, a sample package of that content. And then on the other one is to actually go to OpenSea and buy the NFTs. And that launches on Thursday. Okay. So I will make sure that yeah. it's out before Thursday. And where can people find you? Infinitearts.com is my website. And uh, physically find me in the gallery in Hanalei, Infinite Arts, uh, nights and weekends. And are you on social media? I do well on, I, I'm fairly consistent on Instagram. I've kind of uh, abandoned Facebook. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of Twitter, a little bit of twiddling. Oh my gosh, Twitter. Ugh. I know, it's a whole other thing. Apparently, uh, NFTs live in Twitter and uh, Clubhouse. So if, you know, if you're going to go down that route, um, talk to Trish. Yep. Well, thank you yep. again. I'm going to sign off from our fans here, but don't go anywhere. Okay.